The ultimate manual all-wheel drive transmission is finally complete. Welcome to episode 14 of my all-wheel drive Mustang project, now known as Project Traction. If you're new to the channel, this series covers my conversion of a 2017 Mustang GT to all-wheel drive. I'm an all-wheel drive fanatic and I eventually plan on boosting the car and I just love traction and so I'm an engineer and I decided to make it all-wheel drive. A key part of that was the transmission. So I started out with a TR6060 and eventually made appropriate adapters and had the shaft cut and re-splined to be able to put a transfer case on it from a Dodge Charger. And uh, the final little bits of uh, thrashing I needed to get it on the wheels before I run of season here in Minnesota was to finalize the shifter, which is basically the reverse lockout, and get the clutch working and the, with the throw up bearing and a few other minor details. Uh, over the years I had several concepts of how to make a reverse lockout. Anything from not having one, which I quickly dismissed, to putting a solenoid uh, where the uh, skip shift normally is on a TR6060. But ultimately I decided just to uh, use the same basic concept as the MT82 transmission where you basically push the shifter down to get past a little gate to be able to put it in reverse. So the first step of that was to make the actual shifter handle um, be able to go up and down. And uh, let's get into that right away here. Uh, I basically modified a uh, MT82 handle from MGW and welded it to uh, the base for, from a Camaro shifter. So if that sounds crazy, watch and you'll see how it was done. So here's the MGW MT82 uh, shifter handle taken apart and this incorporates kind of a push down reverse lockout mechanism. This, once again, it, it really made sense just to buy this versus you know trying to engineer something myself. But basically you got a spring, a bushing, an o-ring for some dampening and uh, this is a little pin, the cross pin that goes through the slot and actually is what um, hits the little wall you got to make. And so the, this basically goes in here and can go up and down to allow you to have the reverse lockout. So, but this is obviously meant for the uh, MT82. This whole um, fulcrum here, or trunnion, has to get cut off, which is today's mission, and then welded onto this. So the current plan is to cut this off right here and then turn a diameter that'll fit in the end of, this is the Camaro shifter base, this is the MT82. And I'll, you know, I'll cut this off a little shorter too, but you see this is bored. And so I could have basically a slip slash press fit into here um, before even welding it to have some better structure and keep everything coaxial. So I'm gonna start that process. No going back now. So I chucked it in the lathe and faced it off and turned it down to a half inch diameter. It all was pretty quick work. So the MT82 um, shifter handle, or whatever you want to call it, has been turned down to a half inch. So that fits now into the Camaro one. Now I just got to decide how much of this to cut off before I weld it together. Here's the two pieces uh, TIG welded together. Turned out pretty good. I actually put it in the lathe and the run out is pretty good, um, which you know doesn't really matter much. So start putting it back together and working on the uh, the gate or the wall that keeps it from going in reverse. I did a little sneak up engineering on the wall for the reverse lockout. Um, I laid it out in CAD and then made different revisions. This was the first kind of comically big one. After trying that out, I quickly made a revision and printed it out and kind of made this in between one and then actually uh, a friend helping me out kind of ground it away and did some finessing to make it work and we took those dimensions and made the final 3D printed one. Last uh, proof of concept before committing to making chips on the milling machine. I have to say 3D printing these prototypes really saved a lot of time and is absolutely the way to go. I got to utilize this more in the future. Here we are hogging out the aluminum for the reverse lockout uh, wall. As you can see, we started out with kind of a big chunk of aluminum. This took a little bit of thought about how to hold it and orient it for machining. The part itself isn't very big, but you have to have some forethought in how you um, 
fixture the part in the mill. I kept this shot in here even though it was kind of a screw up. We put way too uh, deep of a depth of cut in the uh, cam program in it. But as you can see it hogged it out just fine and uh, we didn't stop it. And the part of course at the end turned out great even though this looked a little scary at the time. The uh, two fluid aluminum end mill did quick work of the material. Here you can start to see the OD or the perimeter of the part start to take shape. As you can see, yeah, it isn't very big. The block was a lot bigger than it needed to be, but we needed uh, to be able to hold it securely. Here's a zoom in of one of the final cleanup passes or finishing passes to get the final shape before starting to make the pocket that the pin goes into. We switched up to a 3 8 end mill to make the pocket for the uh, little pin and this was really cool to watch and once again using Fusion 360 to do 2D adaptive and then doing a final finishing cut as you can see here really was fun to watch how it just you know plowed right through the material and made such a cool little slot. We then bolted the part to a little fixture block to cut the perimeter in the other direction. I needed something to hold it and this worked out pretty well. Here's the part complete bolted to this little fixture. We had to bolt it down to do the top profile just back here and cut the perimeter and all the radiuses and as you can see it turned out pretty good. Ready to bolt onto the shifter. Just finalizing the adjustment of this stop here so this is the, once again, MGW upper piece, and it's got this adjustable stop here, and I made my own reverse lockout little wall here, um, repeating myself here a little bit, but once again, you know, this is meant for an MT-82, so I welded it on backwards, and normally uh, the MGW version of this part would be over here. Anyways, the point is, is there's some built-in adjustability here, on this you turn it in and out until you get it to where you want it to be and so as you can see here it now there's first second third fourth and it goes in the fifth just fine sixth you can't get it in the reverse right it always just goes in the fifth and then if you want to go in reverse you push it down and it goes into a little slot I machine in there and then it goes in the reverse just like that Here's the last mock-up of the shifter bracket here before I take it off to paint. Did some flapper wheel machining here. Um, you know, this isn't some super high-tech CNC uh, contraption, but, you know, it's super functional and it's not going to go anywhere. And, yeah, it could have been a little bit lighter out of aluminum, yes, but I'm just trying to make some progress and on something that will work. So I'm going to take it off, paint it black, and put it back, and then continue on the uh, finalizing the rest of the shifter. I'm getting ready to put the transfer case on here for the hopefully the final time before it all gets put in the car for the test drive. So I got the adapter plate put on with the screws all Loctited in, the countersunk screws, and then there's one bolt here that comes in from the other side um, that that goes through the original Corvette tail housing. And now I'm going to put on the splined adapter here. Um, I did get it, you know, it's black now versus last time. It actually came in a little hard after um, the heat treat, original heat treat process. It was in the mid 50s Rockwell uh, RC and so I had it tempered back to like 46 so it wouldn't be um, you know too brittle and uh, so now I just got to put this on and lubricate it and put the transfer case on for good. This is a big moment after a couple of years of planning and almost a year of machining and fabricating to bolt on the transfer case to the transmission for the last time before putting it in the car and actually trying to drive it was a big step. So since, once again, uh, sometimes I question why I did this, but since I'm using the bell housing um, meant for like an older T56 Cobra, which was shorter, I guess, which is why I did it, I guess. Um, this doesn't have the clearance for the factory slave cylinder um, like a bell housing that's intended here for like a T56 Magnum in an S197. 
um, has this clearance. So I need to add this cut um, to the bell housing to clear the, the slave cylinder. So that's the next project. And here's the final result. This is where the stock um, you know, slave cylinder line comes out. My current plan is to use the stock line until I feel the need to upgrade. But it uh, clears uh, quite nicely and uh, ready for a little bit of paint and to go in the car. I got a new clutch installed. I didn't go crazy with the clutch for this first round since I'm still just trying to prove out the whole transmission and all-wheel drive. I, you know, I do uh, plan on doing some forced induction and I'll need a better clutch long term but I just wanted to get something reasonable. So this is an Exedi, I don't know, Stage 3, Mach 500, whatever it's called, which should be good for over 500 foot-pounds of torque. We'll see how the foot uh, pedal is if it's much harder than stock, but it gets good reviews. Well, the next problem in trying to get the transmission in the car is I went through all that effort to use a shorter um, bell housing, right? It's almost an inch shorter and with, with the matching input shaft. So basically, rather than this being the length or this area here being the length of a Magnum XL, it's the length of a regular Magnum or an old school 250, T56, right? So this is all about an inch shorter. But I used a Magnum XL front cover so I could use a concentric slave cylinder and hook up to the factory hydraulic line. So this is a slave cylinder meant for, you know, an MT82, uh, or I think it would actually work in a Magnum XL too, but it's too long. Um, I've, you know, I'm using just a single disc clutch for this first go around and basically when this is fully compressed there's virtually no extra travel but worse than that is this little lip right here um, this actually takes a lot of force to push this little lip right here would actually hit the clutch disc just installed the whole thing is just too long so I have a quandary here the other option is to use um, a GT500 concentric slave cylinder which is about an inch shorter um, well it's more complicated than that it's it's shorter but actually has less travel so it would require a spacer behind it a, really if I did the math right about an inch spacer to get it in the right travel range and so now I'm debating do I do that which is well within my abilities to machine an aluminum spacer and use some longer bolts and then just re-bend the line to have it come out where it needs to go or do I go a little crazy and take this apart and machine it a little shorter like take a quarter inch off of everything so it can it can fit um, and then it would you know look kind of stock um, I'm leaning towards the spacer but since this is not gonna work no matter what I do um, I might take it apart just to see what it looks like but I'm on a mission to get this thing on the wheels here, so I can't uh, waste too much time. So let's see how this goes. I decided to go with the spacer for the slave cylinder, and here's the top half all done. Uh, I just got to flip it over and do the back, and should be able to put the slave cylinder on. Here's the completed spacer. Got both sides done. Not just... Uh, Plops onto there, and it's a really nice fit. And then the that goes on there. Uh, I got some longer screws. I'll, I will need to re-bend this here, um, so hopefully I can do that without kinking it here. I got an extra if I do, but uh, moved it out of the way. And if my measurements are all correct, this should work great. Um, you can see there's a little bit more travel before you get to this little stop there. So. Anyways, um, should work out great now and have the right, correct uh, pre-travel for the clutch. Transmission is ready to go in. I am beyond excited, we'll say. Uh, this actually has to come off before I can put it in the car. This has to get installed through the hole in the power tunnel. But have it all mocked up here. You can see all of the changes that had to be done. Um, had to, you know, I've talked about this, but I had to modify this. Obviously, we got the adapter, custom shifter, um, reverse lockout, um, made a little 
custom block off plate for the um, skip shift system. Um, you know, the here's the vehicle speed sensor with the trigger wheel and the adapter for the drive shaft. Um, here is a GT500 throw out bearing or concentric, concentric slave cylinder um, with the spacer. And uh, you know, there's the drive shaft um, output from the transfer case. I did some flapper wheel adjusting here too. Here you can see this is the input for the PWM that will control the, the clutch or the torque going to the front wheels. And this here is actually a, a temperature sensor that I'll have to monitor. I guess if you're slipping the clutch a lot it could overheat. So anyways, um, that isn't real high priority. but. Everything turned out really nice. And this is that same shift rod I showed a couple videos ago with just finished welding and a bunch of flapper wheel action to smooth it out. And I have to say, you know, it looks pretty good. Um, considering it's a part you'll never see when it's actually in the car, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. One last shot before putting the transmission in. Um, like I said, I put a, a, just a single disc clutch to get me by and make sure everything works before getting too fancy on the clutch. But this is the modified uh, quick time bell housing meant for a T56, so it's shorter and ready to go. Well, that's a wrap on episode 14 of Project Traction, the new name of my all-wheel drive Mustang conversion project. Uh, the transmission now is in the car along with the drive shaft I depicted in the last episode and I'm just going through a couple more details, getting the interior back together in preparation of driving it, hopefully. Um, once again, it won't be all-wheel drive, but there's a lot of things to prove out. You know, does the transmission work, any vibrations, the shifter, um, and also I put on the, even though they're not modified for all-wheel drive, I put on some Magnaride front spindles. And so that'll actually have the 48 pulses in it to make sure that the ABS doesn't freak out from having a different number of pulses. If you remember in an earlier episode, I talked about how the stock Mustang GT ABS sensors in the front are 50 pulses per revolution. And all the readily available kind of bearing units, if you will, are usually 48. And I wanted to see if I want to see if the car will handle that. But that's for the next episode. So if you want to see that, please subscribe and as always, like and uh, get the notifications so you know when the new episodes are out. And uh, thanks for watching.